I offered Governor Malloy my condolences on behalf of the nation and made it clear he will have every single resource that he needs to investigate this heinous crime. But aren't the feds just way too busy fighting the war on drugs? Care for the victims, counsel their families. So is he wanting to send FEMA over there? So many people still suffering and a long way from recovery in the wake of Sandy, which makes this next story all the more puzzling. Why are millions of pounds of food and water just sitting in tractor trailers in Brooklyn, unused, when so many people could use them? FEMA tonight with some tough questions to answer. Within the hour, Homeland Security began updating the White House. Well, thank goodness he's not going to be using FEMA, but I am a little concerned about him using Homeland Security. This will be my third stop at this particular checkpoint. What's the purpose of the stop, sir? Immigration check. What are you looking for at this immigration checkpoint? Are you a U.S. citizen, sir? Who's authorized this checkpoint? Department of Homeland Security. Are you a U.S. citizen? Golly, I sure hope they don't take somebody like him away from his duties because who's going to keep those pesky illegals from invading us? Uh, we've endured too many of these tragedies in the past few years. So have parents overseas endured far too many of their own tragedies at the hands of our commander-in-chief. In this video, I'd like to revisit the concept of worthy versus unworthy victim. And each time I learn the news, I react not as a president, but as anybody else would, as a parent. In contrast, the uh, 172 children that have been killed in Pakistan and the many more who have gotten injured by the drones, the U.S. drones, uh, those victims have not nearly been given enough attention, the mass media and among people in government and intellectual circles. I know there's not a parent in America who doesn't feel the same overwhelming grief that I do. The majority of those who died today were children. Uh, beautiful little kids between the ages of 5 and 10 years old. Wow, do his tears defy gravity? He's got his finger on top of his eyelid instead of below it. As a country, we have been through this too many times. Whether it's an elementary school in Newton or a shopping mall in Oregon or a temple in Wisconsin or a movie theater in Aurora or a street corner in Chicago, these neighborhoods are our neighborhoods and these children are our children. And yet, why does he never denounce the violence of a system that he leads. I'm talking about police brutality in the United States. Officers here are heavily armed and in many cases trained to be bullies. They're often given paid administrative leave during cases in which they have used violence against helpless unarmed people, almost always using self-defense as an excuse. And what about this recent event in Monterey, California? SWAT police there used, quote, non-lethal force burning a house and the man inside to the ground. Turns out he was the wrong man, and they, the police, were at the wrong house. Look, I just now uh, Googled uh, YouTube uh, police brutality, and guess what came up? 497,000 cases on YouTube of videos that people have taken. So, and these are all very violent, gratuitous. They're using tasers against mothers with children, uh, against old people in wheelchairs. Um, they're body slamming 92-year-old great-grandmothers. Uh, it's an endless array of just gratuitous violence. <clears throat> if you think about that number, 497,000, I believe that number is as large and possibly larger than criminal assaults on the public in the United States. What's actually behind this culture? One, people who are attracted to police forces are bullies. Now, I don't mean that all of them are bullies, but it does attract bullies and it attracts sociopaths. So the, the personality that goes into that line of work is, is a dangerous personality in, in many cases. And now, another thing that's happened is the police have been militarized by the federal government. They're now issued with military-type weapons. 
and they've been trained to view the public as an enemy. They, they see uh, uh, the public not as something they protect, but as um, an enemy that needs to be uh, suppressed and, and dealt with. And so they're very quick uh, to, to use violence. They're very quick to take offense if you don't instantly uh, kowtow to them and, and act like a very servile person. And even if you do, you can, uh, you can be seriously injured, even shot. There's so many cases of them going to the wrong houses, especially SWAT teams. And we're going to have to come together and take meaningful action to prevent more tragedies like this, regardless of the politics. From the book Manufacturing Consent by Noam Chomsky and Edward Herman, Worthy and Unworthy Victims, it says, A propaganda system will consistently portray people abused in enemy states as worthy victims, whereas those treated with equal or greater severity by its own government or clients will be unworthy. The evidence of worth may be read from the extent and character of attention and indignation. As a country, we have been through this too many times. The U.S. mass media's practical definitions of worth are political in the extreme and fit well the expectations of a propaganda model. While this differential treatment occurs on a large scale, the media, intellectuals, and public are able to remain unconscious of the fact and maintain a high moral and self-righteous tone. This is evidence of an extremely effective propaganda system. One, people who are attracted to police forces are bullies. Now, I don't mean that all of them are bullies, but it does attract bullies and it attracts sociopaths. 
so you, you don't have the right to bear arms because of you know, X, Y, and Z consequence, the fighting off oppressive governments, which doesn't really work anyway. But no, you don't have the right to bear arms because of that. You have the right to bear arms because it's philosophically contradictory to oppose it, right? Because, okay, let's say that uh, people do not have the right to bear arms, okay? So who's going to stop them from bearing arms? Well, people with arms, okay? So some people must have the right to bear arms in order to stop other people from not having, who don't have the right to bear arms. Well, you've got then all of these are penguins except for these five who are the opposite of penguins. Nobody has the right to bear arms except for these guys in a blue costume who ha must have bare arms to stop everyone else from bearing arms. People either have the right or don't have the right to bear arms. And not having the right to bear arms creates insurmountable logical contradictions. And therefore it's false. You know, logical contradictions equals falsehood. Logical contradictions equals falsehood. That's all you need to, uh, to think about. Um, and so anybody who says that, okay, so people in a free society, can they be trusted with weapons? Uh, if you say yes, then you have a uh, free society. And if you say no, they can't be trusted with weapons, then obviously you can't have a government because you have to trust people with weapons who call themselves the government. And if people can't, can't be trusted with weapons, then you can't have a government. I mean, this is the old fundamental thing. And people will always try and create this double thing, this artificial divide in your mind. It's very dangerous, very dangerous, most dangerous thing there is. And they will say, we need a government to protect us from evil people. But if there are evil people in the world, and I have no doubt that there are, where's the first place they're going to go? It's to the government. I mean, if you create an agency with the monopoly of force, it's going to attract evil people like flies to shit. And you do not solve the problem of evil by giving it a monopoly. <laughs> I mean, you may, you may solve the problem of certain conflicts. But, I mean, that's the, uh, it's the uh, Randall Patrick McMurphy uh, argument, right? That you can solve the problem of rebellion with a frontal lobotomy. You can solve the problem of a migraine with a guillotine. You can't solve the problem of evil by creating an agency with a monopoly on evil, which attracts all the evil people. It's like, we have a problem with organized crime, so let's create one big organized crime monopoly and give it domination with nuclear weapons over the whole area. You've not so solved the problem. You've just fed the cancer to the point where life becomes unsustainable. I guess, you know, I guess a guy who's died doesn't have any problem with cancer, but it's not like you've had a cure. So that's really, really important. People will always say, well, because of these bad people, because of these bad consequences, we must have a government. So if I say, well, there's lots of evil people in the world who will take your stuff, so we need a government to protect us from them. Well, how does the government pay for this protection by taking your stuff? You haven't solved the problem. You understand? Um, the use of government as an imaginary solution for social problems is worse, really, but it's on the same intellectual level as the use of God to solve problems in physics and biology. You say, well, God did it. And it there's no answer. It actually prevents answers because it's the pretend answer. When you have a pretend answer, when you think you have an answer, you stop looking for answers. And government is a way of pretending you have an answer when, in fact, you're just making the problems worse. It's, you know, it's the old, uh, it's uh, morphine for a toothache. Hey, my tooth feels better, but the rot continues deeper. So it took the president of the United States and his agents literally just minutes to exploit these poor kids and their families. Overwhelmingly, the pundits are screaming for gun control. But what about the serious issue of public schools? Who in their right mind in this day and age would even send their child to a public school? Public schools are prisons. Their buses are designed like prison buses. They get locked down, indoctrinated, and drugged if bored. But we need government because how else will our precious children be educated? Right?
Mm-hmm. <laughs>